11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at Noon starts now. New information this hour. Two people have been arrested in connection to a weekend shooting at Lenox Square Mall. What we just learned about the suspects and the charges they're facing. Plus, new details about a morning commute that took a turn for the worse. A woman shot while driving on I-85. How she's doing this hour and what police are saying about the search to find the gunman. Plus, developing right now, a new COVID-19 vaccine could be hitting the market. How effective this vaccine could be and could it protect you against various variants. Developing right now, we've just learned that two people have been arrested for allegedly shooting a security guard at Lenox Square Mall. They're just 15 years old, and right now the guard is still in the hospital in serious condition. Tracy M. McPeer has been talking with police for the last few hours. She's here at Lenox, and Tracy, again, we're learning a, a little bit more about the motive. That's right, and based on the charges the 15-year-old boy and girl are facing, it sounds like this may have been an armed robbery. Now, today they are facing a number of charges, including a criminal attempt to commit murder, robbery, aggravated assault, and tampering with evidence. Now, the mall had already closed for the night when police say the guard was shot just outside an entrance near the Apple store around 8.30 last night. He was hit in the torso. Police say they had extra officers in the area as part of stepped-up summer patrols, so they were able to respond quickly and talk to witnesses. They say that helped lead them to the two suspects who were arrested by the Weston Buckhead Atlanta. Now, just this past December, Lennox installed metal detectors. They also started using canine gun sniffing dogs to try to cut down on the violence there. But again, in this case, police now say the shooting was outside an entrance. Tracy, thank you. And police are also investigating another shooting not far from Lenox. A woman is in the hospital after she was shot on I-85 near Georgia 400, causing a major traffic jam during the morning rush hour. Now, it's the latest in a spike of shootings that are happening in this area, especially this year. Mara Siriani is actually, she was one of the first reporters on the scene, and she has more. We know the female victim was rushed here to Grady for treatment. Police say she's in stable condition. This is video from the scene. You can see a lot of police activity early this morning. The shooting happened just before 5 a.m. along I-85 northbound near Georgia 400. The busy stretch of interstate was blocked off to drivers for about two hours as police worked to investigate. They say the woman was a passenger in this Nissan Altima. She was shot as a black sedan pulled alongside the Nissan and someone inside opened fire. The car the victim was riding in immediately stopped, but police say the suspect's vehicle sped off. This is now at least the 18th shooting along Metro Atlanta interstates so far this year. And if you have any information about the shooting, you're asked to call Atlanta Crime Stoppers. Remember, you can remain anonymous. Mara, thank you. The shooting is coming on the heels of Atlanta's new police chief releasing his plan to curb the rise of violence in the city. Just last week, Chief Rodney Bryant laid out three main areas to help keep people safe. First, APD is stepping up efforts to get illegal and stolen guns off the streets. Second, it's working to target nightclubs and bars that tend to attract crime. And third, it's focused on curbing gang activity since the chief says so much of the crime is linked to gangs. Turning now to a developing story out of Cobb County where a police officer is recovering after being shot. The department says the officer responded to a domestic incident. They say the suspect pulled out a gun and shot the officer at point blank range. The suspect then took off running, which started an hours long search to find him. And finally, around 730 last night, they found the man just southwest of Alatoona Lake. That's when officers shot and killed the suspect. Police say if the officer who responded to the domestic had not been wearing that bulletproof vest, he likely would have been killed as well. Basically, um, the vest saved our officer's life. He was actually hit in the in the vest. Um, he was transported to the hospital. Because of the vest, it's not life-threatening injuries, but it would have been a lot worse had he not been wearing a vest. Now, GBI has taken over the shooting investigation, and we also know that we're expecting more information to come out about the second shooting. Later today, we will continue to follow this story tonight on 11 Alive at 5 p.m. A teen has died after being struck by lightning off of Tybee Islands. Police say she was swimming in the ocean just after 2.30 p.m. Saturday when she was hit. The Tybee Fire Department performed CPR on the girl before she was airlifted to a nearby hospital where she later died from her injuries. The 15-year-old girl who was visiting from Alabama has not yet been identified.
Chesley, over to you. All right, thanks a lot. We are looking at well, a few cumulus clouds starting to pop up in the forecast area thanks to the daytime heating. Got to see those cumulus clouds right there. Fair weather clouds is what we like to call them. Mostly sunny skies to call for this afternoon. It's uh, warm out there to say the least. Temperatures are in the 80s. I think we'll get up to the low 90s for highs this afternoon with a few thunderstorms breaking out as well. Not everyone will see those thunderstorms though. It's only a 30% chance. You can see where we had the clouds earlier this morning. Those clouds just fading away further down to the south. Got a front up here to the north stationary now, but that will move through. Our winds will shift to more northwesterly and uh, bring in some drier air for a change, right? We experienced those thunderstorms all week last week. Some of those on the heavy side, a uh, big area as well. Widespread thunderstorms this afternoon. It's going to be more on the isolated side, but where we have a few of those uh, uh, embedded thunderstorms, this is where you're going to see that brief heavy rain. You're going to see frequent lightning and maybe some gusty winds associated with a few of those. Here we are by 415. You can see those around the area we will continue to settle down to the south as they diminish around 8 o'clock tonight. We'll be left with a few clouds, but those clouds will get out of the way and we'll get the sunshine back in here for your Tuesday. And it will be a nice dry day for your Tuesday as well. In fact, the rest of the week looks pretty good. Today, though, temperature should be in the low 90s. When you factor in the humidity with it, it's going to feel like the mid to upper 90s out there. So it's going to feel pretty hot. Uh, we'll drop back down to 90 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. Got some some activity in the tropics. In fact, three areas that we're looking at for development even have a new tropical depression. We're going to detail that for you in the full forecast coming up. Francesca, back to you. Chesley, thank you. We're following breaking news for you right now. Fire crews in Rocktown, Illinois, fighting a massive fire at the Kim Tool chemical plant. An explosion erupted at the site early this morning, sending large flames and heavy smoke covering the area. No word on what caused that massive fire or if there are any injuries. Kim Tool Incorporated is one of the largest manufacturers of greases and functional fluids in the world. Turning now to the fight against COVID-19, a new COVID vaccine could be coming into the market. The company Novavax announcing their latest COVID vaccine trial shows it's highly effective against symptomatic infection, including against the variants. Now, the company says the phase three trial involved nearly 30,000 people in the U.S. and Mexico, and their two dose vaccines was 90.4% effective and 93% effective against the variants, including the alpha variant, which was the predominant variant seen in the U.S. trial. The company says it plans to file for authorization with the FDA in the third quarter. And the U.S. is getting closer to President Biden's vaccination goal of 70% of adults with at least one dose by July 4th. The CDC now reporting 64% of American adults have gotten at least one shot. Now, more than 309 million shots have been administered so far, and nearly 54% are fully vaccinated. The CDC also reporting that 1.2 million doses have been given since Saturday. Now let's zoom in on Georgia's vaccine progress. Today, 41% of people across the state have at least one dose. When it comes to those who are fully vaccinated, that number is at least 35%. More than 7.8 million shots have been administered. Another flu season is behind us while the next is still months away, but medical experts are already concerned thanks to the impact of COVID-19. The pandemic will impact one of the weapons that we use against the flu, but why? Here's our why guy. It's how one virus impacts another. With our focus on COVID-19, the number of influenza cases this year has been low. Georgia Tech's Dr. M.G. Finn says major efforts to avoid a history-making illness had impacts across the board. Because people were wearing masks, because uh, we were doing social distancing all over the world, um, other viruses that spread in the same way that coronavirus spreads, most of those viruses also have uh, decreased. Whether masks and social distancing are with us next year or not, COVID-19 will have an impact on flu season. Here's why. The precise impact will be on the flu vaccine. It changes every year depending on the variants that emerge. There are many centers, medical centers all over the world that monitor the flu virus in their areas and they collect information. You need to know what viruses are circulating. The information collected during this flu season will help determine which variants the vaccine needs to cover next year. However, fewer cases of the flu means less information. There is some data for sure, but not as much as usually is available. Despite that, Dr. Finn and other medical experts say next year's flu vaccine will help prevent illness. There will still be flu, vi flu vaccines created for next year, and I recommend that people take that vaccine. It takes at least six months to produce large quantities of vaccine. Some manufacturers are already at work using the information they have to prepare for next flu season.
Jerry, thank you. Today in DeKalb County, CEO Michael Thurman and other county officials are giving an update on the Tenant Landlord Assistance Coalition program. Thurman says the program will be reopened to county residents beginning next Monday, June 21st. So far, the county has been able to give out $900,000 in relief to more than 230 families. And according to Thurman, there is still $21 million to give out. But he says $50 million has been accrued in fees for back paid rent and the county will need money Money, more money to help. What we have decided to do was to triage those needs and to ensure that the people who are most at risk of being evicted are first in line to receive the uh, support. Now the program will reopen next Monday at 830 in the morning. Officials say make sure you have all paperwork needed before submitting your information. Still ahead, trouble in the skies. Take a look at this video. Multiple incidents aboard flights now sparking talks of increased fines for unruly passengers. We'll take a closer look at what happened during a terrifying struggle on a Delta flight to Atlanta. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have new information for you or airport, excuse me, airports across the country. Hold on one second. I believe the prompter just skipped, so I'm going to go ahead and read this script right here. Uh, new information for you this morning at noon uh, in Cobb County. We just learned the name of the suspect shot and killed by officers. Yes, GBI identifying the suspect as 20 year old Lewis Ray Ruiz. Investigators say Ruiz shot a Cobb County officer who responded to a domestic incident yesterday on North Shores Road, Northwest in Ackworth. They say Ruiz then took off running, which started an hours long search to find him. Finally, around 730 last night, they found Ruiz just southwest of Alatoona Lake. That's when officers shot and killed him. Police say if the officer who responded to the domestic had not been wearing his bulletproof vest, he would have likely been killed as well. All right, now airports across the country had a busy weekend hitting another record at TSA checkpoints. 
The Transportation Security Administration says it screened more than 2 million people on Friday and more than 2 million on Sunday. It is the first time that screenings were above the 2 million mark since the pandemic started in March of 2020. Now, the numbers will likely grow as Americans fly this summer to visit family or vacation. But as travel ramps up, the FAA is proposing a $15,000 fine for passengers who interfere with or assault flight attendants. It's because unruly passengers are on the brink of becoming a pandemic of their own. So Friday on flight 1730, a man aboard was yelling and struggling with others mid flight next to the cabin emergency door. Take a look. <laughs> Passengers say the man was walking up and down the aisle telling people to sit down and somehow got on the speaker and told passengers to put on their oxygen mask. At one point, the pilot asked all strong men to come help and restrain this guy. Now, several passengers stepped up and managed to bring the man under control. People thought our plane was like going down. It was extremely scary. Like, I'm, I'm still shaking. Delta Airlines stating the flight diverted to Oklahoma City. The aircraft landed without incident and the passenger was removed by law enforcement. This year, the FAA has already received 2,900 reports of unruly behavior. And the majority of these involving travelers refusing to wear masks. The FAA has identified potential violations in 446 cases and have initiated enforcement action in 42 of them. Chesley, over to you. All right, thanks a lot, Francesca. We are looking at, um, well, fair skies is what we'll call it for now. we got a few cumulus clouds outside, but you can see on the radar, there's not much going on. We are anticipating the development of showers uh, sometime this afternoon. In fact, I was saying earlier today, we could see one at any point. We saw one up in our, a couple up in our northwestern counties earlier today, but nothing out there right now. They will develop, especially with the daytime heating and a front interacting with our area as well as that continues to push down to the south. This is the wasometer. It's how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have at this time of year. I'm going to give it a 7 out of a possible 11. There's a 30% chance for those showers with embedded thunderstorms to form this afternoon. Not everyone gets wet. It's only a 30% chance, but where you have those, it will be some brief heavy rain on you. Could be some frequent lightning as well, maybe even some gusty wind, so we'll have to watch it uh, for this afternoon. We're not anticipating any severe weather, or at least widespread severe weather at all today. And temperatures in the low 90s for this afternoon. That front just up to the north of us, uh, stationary, but drifting right on through. Has made it through our northwestern counties. We'll continue to slide down to the south. You can see the winds have begun to shift out of the north as well. It's going to bring in some drier air for us. Unlike last week where we had those thunderstorms each and every afternoon. We won't see that this week. We'll see it today. But after today, with the front pushing down to the south of us will be fine, at least from any afternoon scattered thunderstorms. And that'll be nice. The humidity goes down as well, so that'll be really, really nice. All right, it's the middle of June, and already the tropics getting very, very active. It's like they exploded this morning, right? We were watching uh, over the weekend an area in the Bay of Campeche. Uh, development, possibly, but that has uh, lifted as well. We're looking at a 60% chance for development there over the next five days. And then another area that's covered by our little bug there, you can see where we have a 20% chance for development over the next five days. That's way out there, closer to Africa. And then tropical depression number two has formed just off the coast of North Carolina. Right now, packing winds up to 35 miles per hour. It is moving to the northeast very rapidly at 21 miles per hour and will continue in that direction, moving away from the United States. That's good news. Right now, located about 105 miles just to the east of Cape Hatteras. Here's the outer banks of North Carolina. Cape Hatteras right in there. And so it's about 100 and five miles just to the east of Cape Hatteras, but will continue to pull further off toward the north and east and away from the United States. That's good news. It is forecast to become a tropical storm. We'll have to wait and see if it does. Sometime tomorrow it could, and that would give it a name. And that name would be Bill, good old Bill. All right, let's take a look at this cluster of thunderstorms down here to the south of us. Uh, initially uh, had some movement. The models were showing it moving further off to the north. Now we just are down to one model moving it up to the north. You can see most of them painted going back down into Mexico over the next couple of days. We'll have to watch that. We do have some models that will lift that further off to the north and bring in some uh, rainfall over the Gulf Coast state. So we'll wait, watch and see what happens as it continues to meander around the Gulf. Uh, Bill, again, would be the next name storm. We've already had Anna, and then after that, Claudette. 
Don't want to be a record breaking season. Nobody wants that like we saw last year. All right, here's those thunderstorms breaking out this afternoon. Here we are by 530. You can see where we'll have a few isolated showers and thunderstorms around. That should be out of the way by about 8 o'clock tonight, 8, 9 o'clock. And then we'll see that uh, the clouds to hang on. Then they'll break up by Tuesday morning. We're going to start you off with the sunshine. and We're going to hold on to it for the rest of the day. In fact, Wednesday will be a repeater again with a low humidity around and temperatures will be in the upper 80s by Wednesday. That'll be nice. Tomorrow we're looking at 90 for a high temperature. 87 for Wednesday, 88 by Thursday. Two tens right there on the resometer with mostly sunny skies. A few more clouds coming back to us by Friday with 91 for the high. And it's Father's Day weekend that the rain returns. Hmm. 40% chance on Sunday with 87 for the high. Francesca? One of Chesley's favorite holidays. You know it. <laughs> New this afternoon, it was a big topic of conversation over the past year, the 2020 census. But now some of you tell us you're being asked for even more information and you're wondering if the questions are legit. Liza Lucas verifies. The 11 Alive Verify team is tracking viral claims and questions you send to our newsroom. One viewer says she received a survey from the U.S. Census Bureau called the American Community Survey and wants to know if it's legitimate. Let's verify our sources, a spokesperson for the U.S. Census Bureau, the government website, and Peter Bluestone, Senior Research Associate at Georgia State University. To recap, the 2020 Census is the 10-year survey, primarily a population count, which determines each state's congressional representation. The American Community Survey is different. It's an annual survey sent by the U.S. Census Bureau to a sample of the population each month. And the questions dig deeper, asking about topics like education, employment, and transportation. The responses help decide how federal funding gets spent. We're going through that process right now with the American Rescue Plan. Uh, large amounts of federal money is being allocated based on the response to questions from the American Community Survey. According to a Census Bureau spokesperson, American Community Survey participants are selected randomly and contacted via internet by mail, telephone, or in person. The statistics released annually, helping communities decide on key decisions. The Atlanta Regional Commission relies on this data. Our own Georgia State uses data for research to help evaluate programs and guide the state legislature and policy analysis. So it's an important program and lots of government entities rely on it. To sum it up, we can verify the American Community Survey is legitimate and part of annual Census Bureau efforts. The agency's website confirms response to the survey is required by law. And a reminder, while there are a lot of personal questions, the Bureau never asks for your Social Security number or your banking information. Liza, thank you. Still to come, family, friends, and activists hope to keep the name of Rayshard Brooks alive one year after his death. A community coming together, demanding change and justice in honor of his memory. Code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. One year later, family, friends, and activists are hoping to keep the name of Rayshard Brooks fresh in the minds of many. Brooks was shot and killed by an Atlanta police officer at a Wendy's in southwest Atlanta, his death sparking protests and outcry around the city. 
Over the weekend, the Brooks family and supporters gathered at the now demolished Wendy's to remember him. 11 Alive She Knew Her was there and has more on how everyone is reflecting on Brooks's memory. Long live Rayshard! Long live Rayshard! One year later, and this group of people still haven't forgotten about Rayshard Brooks, who was shot and killed by an Atlanta police officer last year. The city of Atlanta showed me that we can come stand for something. To see all of the faces that knew him even just a little bit or didn't know him at all standing in the streets with us that day meant a lot. David McDaniels, Brooks's cousin, used Saturday as a time to remind people of who Brooks was. Say his name. Say his name. And also so energize supporters to keep this case on their minds right. while they push for change and justice. We coming. We, coming. And we want change. Something's going to have to happen. Something's going to have to happen. A family friend of Brooks says George Floyd's death last summer sparked massive protests around the country. But Brooks's death brought the pain even closer to home for those who live in Atlanta. Stuff is going on in the same city you're from. So I'm not... I'm not begging nobody to do anything, but I would love for uh, different people to say the boy's name, get the boy's name out of there because they didn't, he, he deserves justice. That's why one protester passionately reminded people they need bigger crowds and more support because this case isn't over. So you want to know why we don't have justice? It can't just be us. It can't just be his mom. It can't just be his grandma. It can't just be his cousin. It can't just be the friend he grew up with. And no trial date has been set for Atlanta officer Jared Wall. Still ahead, game four tonight in the ATL, and it's coming down to the wire for the Hawks. What Coach McMillan is saying to pump his team up. Connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs>
Welcome back. The rest of the Sixers game and the series is going to be an uphill battle for the Hawks as they get ready for game four tonight, down two games to one. They're in desperation mode. Now, Coach Nate McMillan says that every game from here on out is a must win. And one of the players says that the Hawks know they have the guys to beat the Sixers team and they just need to get stops defensively. Now, tonight's game starts at 730 at State Farm Arena. And of course, you know, we'll have a recap for you tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining us for News at Noon. I'm Francesca Emmerker. Only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up.